Hi darlings, I hope you're all alright and keeping safe and taking care of yourselves. Back for another react and in this one uh, Chantal gets asked a very important question you see you know that uh, Turkish delight that she's been having a little you know dabble with apparently um, someone had contacted him or a few people had contacted him I'm not quite sure how many did and asked him about his say uh, relationship with our foodie you see and this uh, Turkish delight is a little bit concerned he's wondering who the hell he's got himself involved with and the question was asked in her chat I think it was whether or not she'd paid for his um, attentions so let's get on with it oh by the way can I just say I wouldn't be able to do this without my malarkey meter please go over subscribe i'm going to put a link in the description box look at all the videos please subscribe give a thumbs up get an algorithm going darling and while you're there subscribe to mine watch me videos got a whole catalogue now of absurdities in video form give me thumbs up and i'll be ever so grateful yeah I'd share a box of Ferrero Rocher with you next time we see each other. Anyway, let's get on. So here we are. She's uh, in amongst her rubbish, you know, playing Stigger the Dump. Dressed as Winona Ryder in Beetlejuice. And, uh, yeah, about to do a live stream, I think, to answer perhaps some questions. So let's delve in. Let's delve in and find out what the bloody hell has been going on. I look trashy. You always look bloody trashy. That's your that's your style, isn't it? Isn't that why you've got the trash in the background? It's to create a trashy ambiance. Monty says you paid for men. He would. Is this about Monty and the leaked DMs? What leaked DMs? I you know very well what leaked DMs. Do not act new with Auntie Lou. Even the pussy's being turned off by your porkies. You're about to launch into a load of flannel with us. I can almost hear the cogs winding up to start to think of some manipulations and some porkies and excuses. The look on your face tells us that you know exactly what we're on about because you keep abreast of all the shenanigans, all the doings, all the hanky pankings, all the gossip, the full works. That's what you do all day. Go from one platform to another to another, different channels, finding out what's been said and what's not been said. I told you guys that he wanted money before. Yes, you did say that he had asked for, um, or at least you got the feeling that he was after a few kids quid yes we do know that i remember but i don't know is that what he said <laughs> see what i mean that face says it all she's she's been got hasn't she that stupid teenagery silly giggling and smiling she knows exactly what's gone on and she knows exactly what the truth of is of it is and she's she's smiling and grinning out of nerves this is nervous laughter, this is. This is, oh my God, I've been outed again. Now you see, Malarkey make, put together this video, as I said earlier, and this is the DMs. Now don't look at the middle bit where it's all blurry. I don't want your imaginations taking you to places you shouldn't be going. There's obviously a little bit of nudity nutty in the middle there, so let's just advert our eyes. What we're looking for is at the bottom. And these are the DMs acquired from Big Turk. So obviously Big Turk, old Turkish delight, has been in conference with at least one person that we know of. And it says here, look, I was with her for the money. Now, I don't know if that's the absolute truth or whether perhaps this person's been taking the piss out of him for being with Chantal. And because his ego is pricked, He's retaliating with something nasty because he wants to, well, he doesn't want to be demeaned, you know what I mean? He doesn't want to be found out. So he's uh, been nasty about her. But let's push on. So here's the thing. All right. Go on then. So let's start with your pork. This guy first is porky. Young, very young. 
Yes, he's 22. What are you going out with a lad that's 22? Two little ducks. The lad's only just out of bloody nappies. I'm, he's, maybe he's still on the breast. Look, you don't want... Uh, you're, uh, you're nearly 40. Honestly, he could be... He's, he's young enough. Yeah, he's young enough to be your son. No, don't dabble in that pool. Stick to the um, more mature side of the uh, swimming pool, where all the adults are. What are you going to do with this lad, eh? Go and watch Disney movies at the drive through Come on. He's and if you don't know, that Kiwi's, Kiwi Farms is like a gossipy, telltale tit sort of uh, website. People go on there and troll and look for bits of evidence and slag off people and all the rest of it. I mean, it can be get quite nasty and malicious on there. I don't delve. I delved once and I was just like, oh no. This is, I mean, I like a bit of gossip. Don't get me wrong. What, what am I doing now, really? I like a bit of gossip, but on Kiwi Farms, I mean, ooh, they can really stick the knife in and it was a bit too much for me, you know. I'm a bit of a wuss that way. And so I'd, I've only ever been on it, about, I think about once or possibly twice i can't really remember it was that long ago but i don't delve you see the thing is with me i react to flossy chops don't i but i react to what she puts in her live streams her videos what's going on in them i don't go what do they call it the wokey people irl i think that means in real life they don't do that i don't go on the computer and, you know, track down governmental papers or official papers. Or if I lived in Canada, you wouldn't see me in an anorak with a pair of binoculars taking photos about with her, you know, tracking her down in my Ford Fiesta, you know, and, you know, tailing her movements. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not a spy. I'm not Michael Caine or anything like that in one of them Cold War movies. You know, I, I'm not interested in going into her actual life it's just what she makes public i deal with now other people they do do that they're they're amateur sherlock holmeses and some of them some of them go too far sometimes in my point of view other people might have a different point of view but for me that's a bit too um at the moment as it is with that with me now this is internet internet nonsense i'd i want to stay with nonsense i don't want to get involved in anything that could lead somewhere that i don't want to go do you know what i mean so i just keep it on this platform but as i said some people they push the envelope let's put it that way new here Mm hmm when i first met him he didn't ask me for money so did he not we had sex whatever mm -hmm. i told him like what i did and all my story he's what like did you? people are messaging me because i had sex with you what the fuck is it like what is this so then i explained to him i'm like mm -hmm. i'm sorry just ignore it you know like you said you were going to help me and all this shit right now the first bit i want to make the first point i'd like to make is this she said that she met up with him and they had you know a bit of horizontal tango and that um she told him a little bit about herself i mean how she was able to you know fully tell him the the whole thing in one night i don't know she must have spoke very very fast uh, but because there's a lot going on hasn't isn't there and she told him that she was on the internet and blah 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 future and after they'd had you know wumpy bumpy he'd started to get messaged by people. So he's obviously on social media somewhere, you know, perhaps he's on Twitter or Facebook or something like that, Instagram. And they, they were saying, you know, why are you, you know, messing about with Foodie and asking him questions, obviously, about their rendezvous. And he'd said to her, what's all this about, you know? Because she'd obviously not fully explained the whole extent, you know? She, she'd obviously told him, a, she cherry-picked what she'd told him, of course. And then she says there, you, she said that he said, you, you said you were going to help me. Now... That, to me, is the first warning sign. Why would he need help? Has he got a problem? Has he got problems? 
Is he having a hard time? That says to me that this lad has been laying the groundwork. Okay, he's half her age. He's a good looking lad, uh, got a nice fit physique. Obviously has got his, you know, desperation radar fully functioning and he senses in her low self-esteem, low confidence. She wants a bit of attention. You know, she's vulnerable to his charms because, of course, he is a Turkish delight. So he's laying the groundwork and telling her all his woes because that makes sense. It's logic. She's just said, he said to her, you said you'd help me. With what? She obviously had been made aware of some sort of problem or problems that he had. So I think he's been playing the victim, the woe is me, I'm in a mess, you know, I'm poor, I'm struggling. And she, wanting to feel bountiful, probably all flushed with the excitement of their horizontal tango and the fact that this young gorgeous chap has given us some attention has promised to help him in some way uh, anyway so then we like made kind of like made an arrangement where we might like spit it out come on what we were maybe going to work together and do work like... together how was he going to move them bloody boxes? Was he going to get some solvent and unstick Gladys from his bleeding desk chair? Or you, for that matter? Was he going to get all those dirty clothes off the floor and put them through the washing machine and tumble dryer? How was he going to work for you, darling? Was he going to be a housemaid? Videos together, like, you know what I mean? And he needs... Videos, you know what I mean? You mean sexy videos. Was he going to make some sexy videos with you? You want to help him. You would also like a second portion of what he's given you the first time. Kill two birds with one stone. You get some content for your only fans and he is reimbursed with some money which helps him with all those woes he's been telling you. Fabulous. A, a bargain. A bartering situation. Sounds fabulous. Not quite the relationship that you were perhaps opening for, hoping for, but some sort of relationship, a business one at least. Money, you know. So, mm -hmm. and I needed partners for OnlyFans. I Did don't you? know. Maybe I made it sound like... I, like, honestly... Maybe you made it sound like what? You didn't finish that. Maybe you made it sound that it was going to be a business proposition. This... Hanky panky between you. Maybe it you made it sound that you were gonna help him in some way. Maybe you made it sound not quite the situation that it is. Maybe you made it sound uh your history, your past on social media, maybe you made it sound not quite so bad as it really is. You could have told a multitude of lies, couldn't you? I swear I could argue a case against you at this point. You are messaging my frigging former love interests? Like, why are you weird like that? First of all, it's not love loving. At best, it's a barter. That's not love. Me and my husband love each other. You love, you just love knocking around off with this lad, this Turkish delight. Whether or not he loves having it with you is another thing. Although sometimes people are blinded by money. But um, he's not a love interest, darling. So let's get that, that straight. He was a hookup. And secondly, can I just say that I personally, and I'm not telling anybody what to do, I don't think people should really delve into these things with her this DP IRL. I don't think you should go IRL with the uh, foodie. Uh, it it is a little bit. It's it's verging on stalkery. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm saying that in the nicest possible way. So if a Sherlock Holmes out there was listening, they wouldn't be too offended. But it's a little bit over the top. Do you know what I mean, Dan? And I wouldn't want any of you. 
I really wouldn't want any of you to get into trouble. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's all right going on, uh, you know, Twitter and, and, and Instagram and YouTube when she's made something public, then that's fair dues. But delving, you don't want to delve. You don't want to delve into her. Really, you don't. You don't know what your hands and your fingers will find. Don't delve. Uh, well, I'm just going to say that she's a public figure and it's fair game. No, it isn't. This person was not known to anybody. Oh, well, maybe it wasn't Monty. I don't know. So you don't know that it was Monty. So you've thrown his uh, name into the works and you don't know for a fact that it was Monty. You know, when it comes to things like this, you need to be really careful that before you mention names, you've got it 100% proof that this person has done what you're saying they've done. But he was getting messages, yeah. He was getting <laughs> messages. He could have been getting messages from all and sundry. But at first I was like, so what? I was so enamored with mm -hmm. this guy's body and how he looked and how he like because you're all surface you see it's not nothing to do with his personality i bet you now she's she's not that she's she's as cunning as a fox when he was telling you his woes and his difficulties i'm sure an alarm bell somewhere in that knocking of yours started to ring but you were so enamored over him physically that you silenced that alarm because you're so materialistic. You're so, you're everything about the surface of things. His personality, what sort of morals, ethics, uh, integrity that the bloke's got is neither here nor there. It doesn't matter to you, does it? It's just the fact that some hot rod, gorgeous hunkarama was willing to be with you uh, sexually. That was the main thing, wasn't it? You know, the size of him that I was like, you know what? I don't care. We I know you be, don't I care. I don't care. Models of an alley cat. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't want to pay for sex, but something about it sort of turns me on. Like the idea of like a young, hot prostitute guy. <laughs> I don't need to pay for sex. Who is paying for sex? Nobody. It... You don't need to pay for sex. No, of course you don't. But if you want to have a lad of his... The way he is, as you are now, you going... There's going to have to be something that cajoles this lad into being with you. I'm not being funny, look. I'm a blumptious, voluptuous woman myself. I'm 48 years old. Okay. It's a long time since I first bloomed. Do you know what I mean? My water in my vase is starting to turn green. Look, I am sure there are young lads who are hot and sexy and have fabulous physiques. Who are gorgeous in their early 20s. That do find older Plumptious, voluptuous ladies with questionable personality traits attractive. There is always the extreme. But those sorts of chaps are very rare. There are enough stories in documentaries all over TV networks. There are enough stories, articles in newspapers and magazines talking about older women not necessarily plumptious and voluptu voluptuous but they tend to be you know the past the past the first gate of life let's put it that way who find themselves single and alone who are bamboozled by hot sexy six-pack turkish delights and other nationalities there are tens of thousands possibly hundreds of thousands of stories you read about them all the time these lads they play on these women's vulnerabilities low self-esteem no confidence perhaps they've had a few knocks in life perhaps they've recently divorced they're feeling down on the look perhaps they've put some weight on they're losing their looks they're feeling vulnerable 
um, their self-esteem is really low, their confidence, and they hook on them like ticks and they suck them dry. They paint themselves as victims, as people who have a lot of difficulties. These women, you know, feel like a, a, a maternal need almost to protect them and to help them. And like I said, they suck them dry. Those stories are en masse. As I said, there are tens of thousands of those stories. And I think that's what you've got here with this Turkish delight. I think he's um, a player, as they call them. I think he saw you as a possible uh, mark, I think they call them. And he was telling you his woes to hopefully get some help financially. But you are so lacking um, in self-esteem and confidence and integrity. That boost, that initial boost, those few moments of pleasure of being in his company are worth more than your integrity, your pride, your sense of self, your sense of what's right and what's wrong. That you're willing to go through with the masquerade and lie to yourself and hurt yourself just for those few moments of excitement and delusion because you know he's out of your league. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. No, I didn't. It was just fucking bullshits. Well, sort of. Sort of. <laughs> See what I mean? She can't even lie convincingly. You know, by now, you've had so much experience telling porkies. You should be an, um, an expert. You should have a master's degree in the bugger. Come on. No, Kevin didn't want money. Kevin's some other chap that she'd had some dabblings with. Oh, yeah, I did give Kevin money. <laughs> See, I see how she drops thumb. herself in it every time. Yes, and what if I go to, like, Turkey? There's going to be all kinds of, of men there who is. want money. Fertile ground, lovey. And you oh, know it. It's your money to spend if I want to spend it on... I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. If she wants to pay for sex. If she wants to pay for a hanky-panky partner for her OnlyFans, have a business partnership, she, it's up to her. Her body is hers to do what she wants. It's absolutely fine. I mean, I wouldn't do it myself, and I know most people wouldn't, but if she wants to do it, yeah, great. But no foodie that there are consequences to everything that we do and say, Okay. Somebody else hurting you, whether it be physically, mentally or emotionally, it's one thing. But to hurt yourself physically, mentally or emotionally, that's another, that's more intense. You know, I've had quite a few negative moments with men in my life, you know. Um, I'm a serial monogamer, you know. I had a few flirtations and a few dabbles you know I dipped my toe in occasionally I've I, I've had a one night stand well I've had a couple of one night stands but you know you always have that moment don't you in your youth when you're all fertile and frisky your little mad moment mine didn't last very long but you know we all have one don't we but I've like I said had my experience negative experiences with men and I've got to say that you know you know when it's silent and you're quiet and those memories of the past pop into your head and you cringe inwardly when you think about the negative things in your past. The things that always pop into my head and not necessarily the things that these men said and did to me. It was more the things that I did to myself. The fact that I allowed someone to chip away at my self-esteem, my dignity, my integrity, my sense of self, my truth. The fact that on a number of occasions, I too have lived in a denial bubble with horrible men. Telling myself 
this masquerade, this illusion that I've invented for myself. I've lied to myself and those things that I've actually done to myself or allowed to happen to me, I always feel worse about them because I did it to myself. Now, it might work in your favour having this lad as a um, OnlyFans partner. This business arrangement won't work in your favour. It'll give you some content to put on your OnlyFans and you might make an absolute fortune. And you might continue seeing this little Turkish delight and having the odd hook up in a nice little hotel somewhere. And it might give you a sense of, you know, joy and pleasure and might be a boost to your ego. Make, might make you forget your woes for those few moments. But overall, it will chip at your integrity, your sense of self your confidence, your esteem, your truth. And you will end up having what happened to me, happen to you. In the future, you'll be sat, you know, might even be washing up, having a cup of tea, a little puffy puff, and a memory will come flooding back into your head and it'll make you cringe. It'll make you want to jump out of yourself and walk away because you hurt yourself. And that's the worst sort of damage to get because that scars your soul, your mind, your emotions. What we do to ourself is always worse, especially when it's harmful. This lad is a chancer, as my mother would say. Give him a wine. Birth. I don't care how big his winky woo is. I bet you can get a dildo as big. And it'll probably be better because it'll always work as long as you keep the batteries charged and you can have it when you want it. And you can keep it nice and clean, give it a wipe over with an antibacterial wipe. A lot easier to contend with when, than when it's connected to an actual man. You've got to feed that and look after it and do its ironing. Do you know what I mean? Just a bit of advice from you, from me to you, woman to woman. Because I'm just that little bit older than you, Bab, you see. And just that little bit wiser. And sometimes when you're in this situation, you can't see the wood for the trees. Well, I've got my glasses on and I can see the whole forest, darling. And this lad is not for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm editing like mad, you know, and hopefully I'll get to see you soon. Until then, remember, I love you all loads and loads. I really, really, really do. Take care of yourselves. Be good. And if you can't be good, have a bit of Turkish delight. The sweet variety. See you later. Bye.